back, everyone. I'm Michael Finney. This is Consumer Talk on KGO. On the live line is Lauren DeLuca. She's with the Chronic Illness Advocacy and Awareness Group. We're here to talk about the new CDC opioid prescription guidelines. Hey, Lauren, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. How are you? Good. You know, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm very torn on all of this. I know that we have more than 100 people dying a day from opioid overdose. Um, you know, any way you cut it, that is a, uh, you know, a, a major chronic problem that's got to be dealt with. On the other hand, we have people living in pain and um, that that need the relief. I, 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 I don't know where we are. Where, where do you come down on this? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. And it, you're right. It is a very complicated subject that it's not a cut and dry issue. So my stance in this is our organization, um, I'm the president of the organization Chronic Illness Advocacy and Awareness Group. And we became together in 2017 as a result of a medical emergency I had that got mishandled. And I didn't receive the care I needed. And I found out that day everybody cited the DEA as a reason not to provide me the care I needed. And I was just, you know, an insurance agent doing my job, just seeing what was going on on TV about the opioid crisis, hearing about we need to crack down, we need to do something. And I didn't see really anything being done except for hearing that. And then once I got injured and I really needed medical care, I realized they were doing something and they were cutting back access to the degree that the people in the emergency rooms or real danger or post-operatively weren't receiving any more medic any many more medications as a means to combat the opioid crisis but this has changed and evolved over the last couple of decades and it's truly now a illicit heroin it's an illicit fentanyl and heroin crisis now so the prescription drugs that from the 90s where the diversion might have been an issue is no longer an issue today and we've got the pendulum that's swinging the complete other direction where we have inadequate access for medicinal use. Well, and, and that happened once before, right? I mean, back in the 90s, um, people were going with pain because they arrested a few doctors. And so the doctors were like, I, I can't go to jail for doing my job. So I, I remember back in the day, I was receiving complaints from people saying, I can't get the, the, the medications I need. They lighten it up and now we're back where we were, right? I mean, it, didn't this happen yeah, all before? Exactly. We've been here in the past We've where we go and we're giving an adequate supply, we're treating, and then it there becomes an abrupt change in, in their policy, administration, pub, just public health issues, where they're going to change the directive and take it all back. So we keep doing this pendulum swinging from one end to the other instead of just learning from, you know, the past and constructing a public health policy that works for all constituents and citizenry because substance use disorder has very special needs and it absolutely has its own it has a it is a crisis of its own and if they need treatment but now we've got this other situation once again we've swung the pendulum way back where we're not treating pain at all and we're actually engaging in just outright medical torture so what's the solution i right? yeah, yeah. You know, we, we just saw what was it this week or, or the week before where they picked up 60 doctors for basically being drug dealers, right? Yeah, well, that, that's actually what where I see where we are going wrong. Instead, we have the DEA focusing on all of the doctors as the root cause of the opioid crisis and all this upstream prevention, as in, well, if people never receive the opioid, they're never going to become addicted. They're never going to have a substance use disorder. And maybe we can, like, cut the snake off at the head and not let it happen. But we're forgetting about the fact that this is medicinal, and we need it for surgeries. We need it for, you know, acute pain incidents like car accidents and things like that, as well as the treatment of long-term pain. And pain is not something like we're talking about. You always see in the news dentists and backaches and things like that. And we're talking about general aches and pains that most people can think of. That's acute pain. Chronic pain is something that is a serious illness. A lot of times it's not just pain. We're talking about an illness where, in my case, I actually have a condition that from not receiving my treatment, uh, my veins had collapsed and it actually fell and crushed my stomach in two places in my intestines and impeded the blood flow to my kidney. And I was left out of a hospital for eight, nine months without treatment 
I don't even know how he didn't die. Sheer willpower and just really building up the organization to get out there and find out what was going on. How did I go from being able to go to the doctor and getting treatment to stonewalled across the whole state and letting, being permitted to just outright die with top-tier health insurance? Now, most people don't even know your side of the story, do they? No, not at all. Yeah. Uh, and I can speak that to myself because when, I, when this happened to me, I had found out that this had been going on for at least 10 years. And I was completely uneducated, oblivious that this was happening in the country as it has not been brought to the news. And it's they're not being honest about it. So what should be done? I mean, is there, you know, you say there's no quick fix, but is there, you know, if you're a doctor and you're treating people with chronic pain, but you're looking at they may take your medical license and you may be broke, all of a sudden you go, I don't know, that sounds like a lot of pain to me. I don't want to go there. Yeah, and that's actually exactly where we went wrong. So a lot of doctors just stopped prescribing. We had a real issue where doctors were abandoning patients. In the past three years, the, um, the opioid prescribing guidelines were brought forth in 2016. There was an immediate spike in suicides. My state, Massachusetts, went up 35% in 2016 alone. That's an epidemic of its own, and nobody will even speak about it. And so we have, um, there's a lot of different fixes that we have, and we have to kind of look at both sides of it. Are, are politicians willing to listen to you? Are politicians willing to listen to you? Oh, absolutely. We actually just had excellent meetings up in um, D.C. the week of April 8th. We met with, uh, we started a series of meetings where we dropped a, uh, our recent report. We had a, we discovered some legislation as to kind of why this was happening to all of us. And we were able to backtrack this 10 years. And um, we were, we presented with, a dozen politicians, and they were all receptive to hearing our side, and we were able to actually bring out some serious legal elements that were explaining why these CDC guidelines came about. I mean, things don't just happen without somebody, you know, asking for it to happen. And for the past three years, advocates have been screaming, you know, this has caused massive pain, suffering. Nobody can get access. It isn't, you know, as easy as, oh, you can just talk to them and get treatment. No, you can't. So what, what do you tell someone right now who's in chronic pain, whose doctor isn't listening? Well, right now, we have really been largely relying on just really trying to reason with the doctor. But more often than not, they can't get any help. But what is great is in the last couple of weeks, we've had some serious sharp developments in from the CDC as well as the FDA. Actually, on um, April 9th, the, F the FDA had made a statement for immediate release that the forced tapering of patients needed to stop immediately. I'm going to have to leave it right there. Lauren, I've got to leave it because I'm, I'm right up against the clock. Great information. Chronic illness advocacy and awareness groups. Lauren DeLuca. Lauren, you did a great job today. I appreciate you dropping by. It shows you how complex uh, everything is in society. There's no easy answers for anything. Even an opioid crisis. I'm Michael Finney. This is KGO, San Francisco, San Jose, Oakland.